you got a copy? I don't know if you've had your coffee and correct grammar yet this morning, but if you haven't, let's get some in you. One thing that everyone is usually most interested in, as far as this technology goes, is syntax. People always want to know how to identify a fictitious conveyance of grammar. Now you see the rule one, rule equal must play into this. Before you can tell someone else what they're doing wrong, you yourself must have closure on how to convey a correct sentence structure. So in the last mini class that I did here in Coffee and Correct Grammar, I gave a brief lesson on how to syntax. Gave you everything you needed to know about how to syntax to get you started and what to practice, so on and so forth. I'm gonna do the same thing today with creating a correct sentence structure. I do everything with an eye towards document, contract, postal vessel court venues, meaning real life practical applications of this stuff, how you would create a claim. Grammar wise, when I, when I talk about the grammar. So where do claims come from? First of all, why are you doing this? Why are you creating a correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal vessel, court, venue? What's your volition? Why are you doing it? And I know I'll get answers. People will say, well, because I want to be correct, you know, and so on and so forth. And that's wonderful. That's great that everyone wants to be correct. But that's a vague answer from someone who only has a theoretical grasp of what this is rather than a practical grasp. And what I mean by practical grasp is being able to actually use it in a now space scenario. So when I say what you need a reason to use it, meaning for me, there has to be a trespass occurring. There has to be tangible harm about to be done, meaning to be done, or has been done in order to use this and use it with the full force and correctness and this, that, and the third. So there has to be a reason, a, a valid reason. Now, valid reason could mean different things for different people. Of course, I've gotten emails from people saying, you know, I just got a DUI. How, how do I get out of it? And that right there tells me they don't have the capacity to grasp the psychology of this stuff just by the simple reason that they ask that. And my response back will usually be, well, were you drinking and driving? So now you're trying to get out of taking accountability for something that you chose to do. And correct sentence structure will not work in that aspect. Now there are some gray areas, like for a speeding ticket, say uh, you see that there's the speed limit sign says 35 or 25 and it's a school zone and you go 30. And you get a ticket for that. You get pulled over for that. Why would you want to get out of that? Like, what is the psychology behind in yourself that you would you did, you were in the wrong because that place is a safety place for children who may be running across the road because children do that. It's put there for a reason and you're violating that. You're putting lives in danger by doing that. So why would you want to get out of that? Now, if you're on a highway and it's a 75 mile an hour speed limit and you go 77 and you get pulled over, that's different. That's different. But if it's a 75 mile an hour speed limit and you're going 100, that's also different. You see what I'm saying? It's the psychology behind this stuff. You have to have a valid reason for doing it in order for it to work and the correct volition and all that other stuff. So we've identified the reason why we're doing it. What are we doing it for? 
we have to have a valid reason. Next, we have to identify where a claim comes from. Where do claims come from? When you create a claim, where does it come from? If you're familiar with my videos, you will know that I promulgate the psychology that one may only make a claim for oneself. Because internally, for me, nothing would exist if I was not sensing it. YouTube would not exist if I was not sensing it. This computer wouldn't exist if I was not looking at it right now. The, the viewers out there that are, according to YouTube, watching this wouldn't exist if I wasn't thinking about them right now. And if I were to vanish from this existence, none of it would ex the existence wouldn't exist because I'm gone. I can't make a claim for it because I'm not here anymore. It's the same thing for everyone else. One may only make claims for oneself. That's why I'm constantly going on and on about when people say, you should do this. Hey, Jason, you shouldn't edit this video. Jason, you should copyright the flag. Those are trespasses when you tell people what they should or shouldn't do. This is very important to be cognizant of the language you're using when speaking to others, the psychology and volition, meaning you want to control or modify what someone otherwise may not have done. Now, if someone asks you, hey, what, what's your advice on this? And then you offer it to them, that's different, right? So, or you could say, may I suggest? And then I would say, yes, you may. Or I would say, nah. Then there's no trespassing occurring there. That's just a small example. So anyways, claims come from oneself. Oneself's port of sensation. The data comes in. I sense it. It docks. I formulate knowledge and transship it out as correct sentence structure claims. That's why I tell my students and try and get everyone in the habit of starting the sentence with, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts. Because right away, it puts it in your jurisdiction. You're taking jurisdiction over what your grammar. You are the claimant. It's your knowledge. What's it a knowledge of? You're making a claim of of the facts. Every correct sentence structure has specific sequencing of the parts of speech known as positionals. There are four positionals, four of, with, and by. Four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruent. You cannot say that of and by are congruent with for or vice versa. It's one word, one meaning, one congruency, rule one, rule equal. For, by, of, with. As we go on, you'll see how that makes sense. Every correct sentence structure claim must have a cause. It must start with a cause. And the positional, if you look at the syntax key, the positional for, F-O-R, serves the function of starting off the sentence with the cause. So you start off with for, that's the first word in the sentence, or correct sentence structure phrase or name. The first word is going to be for. And then what comes after that is what's known as the lodial. The lodial, to explain it using plain English, just basically denotes ownership of what comes after the lodial, which is a fact. So we have these little sections of the sentence, position, lodial, fact, phrases. You have your fact, which in this case, is, which I just said, claimant's knowledge, all right? That is going to be the fact in this position lodial fact phrase. 
I'm writing it down. So it's your positional for, which functions as the cause in the sentence, the lodial the, which denotes ownership of the fact. Which fact is it? Is it the fact, this fact, my fact, her fact, their fact, this fact? That's what a lodial does. And then you have the fact, claimant's knowledge. Now you notice I put a hyphen in here and I've underlined it. This shows, the underline shows that this is to be taken as a whole. And this hyphen indicates that it is a compound fact, a compound known, K-N-O-W-N. Meaning I've taken two facts, claimant and knowledge, and combined them to make one fact. So using the syntax key over my shoulder there, this would syntax as five, six, seven. This is the cause. Now I'm fond of saying that when you create, when you have, when you draw a straight line, you need two points with which to draw that straight line. You have to establish the geometric level playing field. You need two points so that you can establish a geometric level playing field. This position lodial fact phrase, the cause of the correct sentence structure, is this dot. We need another dot to establish what direction we're going in. The correct direction. So this is the first one. This is the cause. What comes after the cause? The concern, or as some people like to say, the consequence. I stopped using the word consequence simply because it's got a particle of negation in it, S-E, in front of a Q. And when you have SE in front of any hard consonant, it means no. And you can look that up. So I use the word concern. So as I said at the beginning, you need a position lodial fact each positional for, of, with, and by each have a function. Of serves the function of the concern. So we've established that for is cause, of is concern. So now we have two points. It's knowledge, that's point, this point. Of the facts, that's this point. We have established where we're going now, the direction. For the claimant's knowledge is the cause. What's the cause concerned with? The facts. Now we can put some movement in here. We can move the cause and concern into the possessive of the claim. So you see here, there are two verbs in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, is, which is singular, and are, which is plural. The plurality and singularity of the verb is completely contingent upon the plurality or singularity in the cause portion of the sentence. Claimant's knowledge is singular. Therefore, we would use the singular verb is, which I put here. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts, is. Now, if claimant's knowledge was plural, as in claimant's, for the claimant's knowledge is, then it would be are, but it's not singular. The plurality and singularity of the verb have nothing to do with the of the facts portion. It has only to do with the claimant's knowledge. If you wish, you can make an analogy with the fiction um, diagramming method of determining what is a subject, what is a predicate. The plurality or singularity of the verb is contingent upon the subject. Sort of the same thing. So now we go into the possessive. 
which is width, the third positional that we can use. So we have width the, I'd like to point out that we have this compound fact claimant's knowledge. So we've identified a claimant. So that must mean that this is a claim. So we have to put the word claim in there somewhere because if we don't, now we're just assuming that it's a claim. You have to put the word claim in there somewhere. I like to put it after the verb. It doesn't necessarily always have to come after the verb, but in this case, I put it after the verb. This is the possessive. With is the possessive. To reiterate, for is the cause, of is concern, is is the verb, and now with is the possessive. What is the cause of the sentence? What is the cause of the claim? The claimant's knowledge. What is the claimant's knowledge concerned with? The facts. Is. What's possessive of the facts? This claim. We're making a claim of facts. We're continuing along this line. So now I've put a point after the verb because this with the claim is this point right here. We're continuing along the same line. What are we claiming? What can we claim here? Let's say uh, is with the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, conveyance. I'm going to abbreviate correct sentence structure, by the way. I'm going to switch out conveyance with conversancy. Okay. So, as you can see, I did a little bit of scribbling here, but it is what it is. So, now we have a concern after the possessive. So, we have cause, concern, verb, possessive concern. So, what is the claim? concerned with. It's concerned with the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, conversancy. So I'm claiming that I'm conversant in correct sentence structure, that I know how to use it. I'm knowledgeable of it. I can do it. I'm doing it right now. This is actually, I'm actually certifying what I'm doing while I'm doing it, by doing it. So now we can continue our, our little straight line here and I'll make it as straight as I possibly can. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, conversancy. Okay. Now, since this is an of the, this is a concern, you cannot put a by the after that. Because the mathematical interface will not work if you do that. You have to put another possessive. Always remember, the possessive follows the verb, and it always precedes the authority. Two possessives cannot come one right after the other. You must put a concern in between them. It's very important in order for the mathematical interface to work. In order for it to be mathematically certified, you must have a cause and you must have an authority, a beginning and an end. It's very specific. So this is where we are. We need about two more points to complete this sentence. So as I just said, what comes after the concern here, it would have to be another possessive. So for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, conversancy. So I've chosen to say with this performance. So what is the correct sentence structure, conversancy, cons uh, possess what is possessing? the correct sentence structure conversancy, the performance, this right now, what I'm doing right now, the performance is possessive of 
the conversancy. And now we can move into the authority. What is the authority of the performance? Who's authorizing the performance? The only individual who can, the one making the claim. One may only make a claim for oneself, so one has to take authority over one's own self. Unless you're submitting to someone else's authority, then you would give them authority. It's your choice. So to stay on track, let's look at our line here. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, conversancy with this performance. Now we need one more point to finish it off. This is the last point. I'm going to use my regular pointer here. So this is the authority. Now we come to the authority by. By this claimant, comma, space, Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass, period. I've underlined this, which means it's meant to be taken as a whole. If you were to syntax this last little bit here, it would syntax as five, six, seven, seven. Notice there is no full colon in front of the J. Now, if you choose to put one there, that's entirely up to you. For me, it's not necessary because this by the positions both of these facts because this comma in my styles manual gives closure to the fact that the comma just is used as a tool to group facts together. So I've given closure that these are facts if there's commas involved. So positioning them has already happened with this. So now the mathematical certification, how does that work? Oh, hold on. I got to put the points at the, big, at the top here to finish it off. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, conversancy with the performance by the claimant, comma, Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass. There's your line. We're going along the straight line. We're not going down here. We're not going up here. We, don't, we know where we're going. We've given closure to that. It's correct positional sequencing. So uh, there are four positionals, as I said at the beginning, four of, with, and by. Four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. I'm going to read this backwards. This is how the mathematical interface works. Pay very close attention, please. For this claimant, Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass, of this performance, we've established our two points, because you need two points to draw a straight line. For this claimant, Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass, of this performance is. Now we move into the possessive. With the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, conversancy of the claim with the facts by the claimant's hyphen knowledge, mathematically certified. It maintains the same meaning forwards and backwards. What is the cause going backwards? The cause is me, the claimant. Jason Knight from Matthew Colin Glass. And what am I concerned with? A performance. We have our two points. Got our established our geometric level playing field. Now we put our singular verb in there. Now what is possessing the cause and concern? The correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, conversancy with the. And what is the conversancy concerned with? The claim, because I'm making a claim of conversancy. With the facts is possessive of the claim. It's a claim of facts. And what is the authority of the facts? By the claimant's knowledge. That's the authority. Same value, forwards, backwards. 
mathematically certified. Boom. There's your class. My gift to you. That's how you create a correct sentence structure. That's the psychology behind it. Very simple. Very easy. When you really break down those barriers of cognitive dissonance and belief systems and, and authoritarian followerism, and you really get into the meat of the matter, it is very simple. Very simple. Now, there are some other elements to it where you, you, know, you would not use particles of negation in your facts unless you know how to do that. And a quick take on that is if you look at my syntax key up there, you will see particles of negation in adverb, adjective, pronoun. But you notice I underline them and sick them, which shows that I know they're not correct. And I've claimed them by underlining them. And then I also give closure to those in my dictionary as to why I would use them. Otherwise, I would have to come up with completely new words for those for positive performance condition of state. But there is a performance condition of state for a pronoun, an adjective, or an adverb, so why bother? Does anyone have any questions? Usually when um, people come on and ask questions, they don't ask about the grammar, which is okay, which is why I do this to get people to know what the grammar actually is. Thank you, Hans. I appreciate that. Gifts are a wonderful thing. That's how we, as men and women, um, make it through this world, helping each other out. I do have confidential workshops, and they're much like what I just did here, except for the fact that the student can ask me questions face to face. That's the only difference. All the knowledge that I have, I put out there to the public. I give it away. I give it away. If you choose to donate, that's up to you, and I much appreciate it, but you don't have to. This is my gift to you. I don't expect anything in return. That's what a gift is. There's no concept of refunds with gifts. A gift is a gift, and this is my gift to you. Take it for whatever it's worth to you. I hope you find value in it in your life. All right, no grammar questions. Awesome, all 10. Hey, glad to see you, man. Um, I know you've been around for a while doing this, so much honor and grace to you as well as Hans. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you. <laughs>